Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Thought Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, what we're going to talk about is something that came up in one of our coaching calls. One of our members who's in both Mastering Academic Applications and the Success Society raised this week this concept of a social media cleanse. And what they did was they reached a point in their journey when they were ready to say goodbye to things that weren't serving them. And I absolutely love this. This is one of my most favorite parts of the transformations that I see in my clients, in our community, is when people are ready to actually let go of what is not serving them. And this often can take several months, if not years, depending on what the situation and circumstances circumstances are. Specifically, this community member said that they had recently deleted there were there was a lot that this person said which was and all of it was amazing one of the things that i'll i'll just focus on was they said that they removed the apps for things like you know for social media apps from their phone and we've talked about this on the podcast before is sort of like cleansing your 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 palate if you will and I think that this is a really important concept to revisit because we often get busy and we forget that what we are putting into our minds, what we are seeing and scrolling on our phones is effectively a diet for how we think, a diet that affects how we think, a diet that affects how we feel, affects what steps we may or may not take, and affects the level of confidence with which we pursue what we want. And I think that that's really, really important. Another member in this discussion said that they used to identify so much with the number of likes that they got on their photos. And if they didn't get a certain number of likes, they would delete their, you know, the picture or their posts, whatever they posted. And they took it really personally. And if something didn't receive a lot of likes, they took that really personally. And they, that member has also deleted all social media from their phones. And they said that they only spend about 60 seconds a day on social media, which I think is, is actually great. So I think that this is part of a larger conversation. It's not just about deleting something off of your phone. And by the way, there's many ways that you can engage with social media where you don't actually need to delete from your phone. For example, I've given examples in other podcast episodes where you don't necessarily have to delete the app altogether. You don't necessarily have to delete your account altogether. You can put an account on pause. This happened a lot during exam times with my peers that they would put their, they would disable their accounts during exam time so that they weren't distracted and then turn it back on or, or enable the, their accounts again. Following exam time or following those busy seasons, you can also just stop the notifications, period, coming to your phone so that the app is still on your phone, but you don't have to get constant notifications. We've talked about that as well. But this is part of a much bigger issue, in my opinion, of who we surround ourselves with. What kind of thoughts are you surrounding yourself with? What kinds of people are you surrounding yourself with? And the reason that this is such an important conversation to have and to have repeatedly, we've talked about this before on the podcast, but I want to talk about it again because it comes up in our coaching sessions regularly. It comes up when we are made, you know, sometimes made to feel insecure by other people. And there's a lot of reasons that that could happen. And one of the most important things, as I said, is who we surround ourselves with and how. Well, something that we talked about also in one of our sessions, as you can tell, we cover a lot in our sessions. Something we talked about in one of our sessions is that you thrive as much as the people around you are thriving. And I think that that is something to think about because 
when we surround ourselves with negativity, when we surround ourselves with people who are not growing or who do not support our growth, we feel quite limited. Or actually, and I'll add this, when we surround ourselves with people who are triggered by our growth, who feel insecure and and may lash out in various ways at us because we are growing and they are not at the same place you are, these things can hold us back because we tend to feel a level of guilt if we if we think we're making somebody feel a certain way without intention. And we tend to also, as I said, grow as much as our environment allows, right? We see this with, with animals actually all the time with, for example, turtles specifically. I don't know if, if you know anything about turtles. I, fun fact, I used to have pet turtles. They stink. So don't actually go and get a pet turtle. I'm warning you against that now. They smell so bad. But anyway, and we ended up once we realized this, we, we donated them to our local pet store, which had a much bigger terrarium. Actually, it was like a whole water fountain thing that they could live in and be very happy in. And one of the things that I learned as part of having these turtles as pets was that in the terrarium that we had them in, and it was like, you know, it was, you know, big in a room, but for a turtle, it was not big at all. The turtles remained quite small, you know, and I would say like they grew max to max, like four inches in diameter. And these were supposed to be like pretty big turtles. And, and what I learned once, you know, I began to learn more about turtles and animals and growth and everything is that they actually stopped physically growing because their environment was, was too small for the growth that they needed in order to actually thrive. And so once we donated them to the pet store where there was this like big water fountain thing that they could live in and swim all around in and, and everything, they actually got huge. And we would go to the pet store because it was, I, I did many of my volunteer hours there back in like junior high and we got other family pets there. And so actually the pet store knew us quite well as a family. And so we would go back and, and we would like see the turtles in the tay in this like waterfall fountain thing. And they were big. They were huge. Like you couldn't even believe that they were the same turtles because they were like easily by this point, and it wasn't even that long. This was like a few months. They were like a foot in diameter. They were really big and they were happy. And I, of course, as like a, you know, you know, as a kid, I had no idea that keeping them in these small tanks was actually stunting their growth. And I think it's a really interesting metaphor for how we can stunt our growth in ways that we're not realizing and we're not intending to. We're not intending to be harmful. We're not intending to be, to, to prevent growth. But sometimes the environment that we're in simply does not allow for growth. And that is our social environment as well. And so one of the most important lessons I think I've learned over time is to put yourself around people who want the same things as you do. That doesn't mean put yourself around med school applicants if you want to apply to med school. It doesn't mean put yourself around law school applicants if you want to apply to law school. It means put yourself around people who want growth. Put yourself around people who and actively do this. Actively seek out community for people who want growth. Community. Seek out that. That's so important, that word community. And community can mean so many things. At Apply Yourself, we call ourselves a community because we absolutely are. We look to each other for support. We come to each other for advancement, for strategy, for growth, for thriving, for, for troubleshooting in our various coaching programs. And we, in some of them, meet every single week. And our members come every single week because this is the only place. And they've said this, this is the only place that they feel like they are around like-minded people that want to grow. Nobody cares that the other people in our coaching groups are also applying to law school, are also applying to med school, are also applying to dental school or whatever school you're applying to or your master's program, your PhD program, whatever it is. Nobody cares because we are not competitive. We help each other grow. We're not, we're not playing off of each other in any way. I have found that similarly, I have needed those moments of growth as well. I belong to different communities. I put myself in different communities that I 
need for my growth. And these are communities of colleagues, communities of peers. And what you find very quickly is that you realize as soon as you find that community for growth, that community of like-minded people who are actually helping you succeed and who are pushing you forward, who are helping to propel you forward just with their good vibes, good energy relating to you and providing some, maybe some solutions, maybe just some thoughts, maybe some reflections, but also just being able to relate to you and maybe the, you know, a challenge that you're facing or a struggle that you're going through. Just by doing that, you feel such, you feel heard, you feel growth, you feel good making your choices and you're not held back by other people's opinions, by other people's expectations, by other people's pressures, by other people's triggers that are making you feel guilty. Because here in this community and in any community that you're seeking out that is good for you, you are very clearly feeling, seeking, providing support, encouragement, strategy, reflection, and just, just humanness in the way that that each member of the community needs it to grow and to thrive. And it's so important that this translates not only to our physical relationships, but also, you know, I mean like in-person relationships, but also to our relationships with technology and online and 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 with online spaces. So what are you following? Who are you following on your social media? What kind of support is that providing you? What kind of information is that providing you? And a really good litmus test for this is when I'm scrolling and I stop on this picture, how do I feel? Or I stop on this video or I stop on this whatever. How do I feel? Do I feel better? Do I feel more energized? Do I feel positive? Do I feel like I can take that next step or like I have that courage that I need to take the next step? Or am I made to feel bad about myself? Am I made to feel guilty about myself? Am I made to, or about my choices? Am I made to feel like something is not possible for me? Am I made to feel like I'm not good enough for something that I want? And you should never feel not good enough for something that you want. I was giving a, a guest lecture for an organization that that we're very happy to support and and donate our time to. I was giving an evening session, and one of the participants at the evening session, and this is for this was for young professionals and professional school applicants. One of the participants said to me, you know, in our Q and A, you know, I was thinking about pursuing this opportunity, but you know, I I don't think I'm ready for it. And my response was. You're thinking about it. It's in your mind. Your mind has expanded. Your opportunity has expanded to the point where you're raising this as an opportunity or a possibility for yourself. That means you're ready for it. That means you're ready for it. And in so many cases, when we feel ready for something, it's actually late to be taking that next step. We want to feel uncomfortable. We don't necessarily always want to feel ready. I, you know, for the big choices that I've made in my life, I never feel ready. I feel like it's the next step and it might be uncomfortable, but oh, well, here we go. And that's how growth happens. That's how growth happens. If we were always comfortable, where would we be? We'd be stagnating. We'd be complacent. And that's not the kind of life we want to live, right? That's why you're here listening to this podcast. That's why you're part of this community. You don't want to be stagnant. You don't want to be complacent. You want to make those choices. You want to make those leaps to the next big thing because you see something bigger for yourself. And you have to create that. Nobody's going to come create that for you. You have to create that for yourself. You have to create the space, time, and energy and investment. Sometimes you have to invest in yourself. When I become part of communities, I am paying to be part of those communities. Whether it's personal development or business or or anything, I, I'm paying to be part of those communities. I'm not looking for free resources because the free resources are not what's going to to move the needle. The free resources are there to get you to a certain point. And of course they do, but really if I want real growth, I'm paying for it. And because there is so much value. And of course, it has to be the right program and all the rest of it. You have to do your research. You have to make sure that it's the right program for you and what you're looking for. This is why it's so important to have those conversations, to reach out 
and figure out what your next step is to figure out how to actually achieve that life beyond your wildest dreams. And it's going to take investment of time, energy, and money. And that investment gets you around people who are going to get you there. Now, it doesn't mean that the people who are in that community can actively make your choices. In fact, we don't want them to. But it means that you're surrounded by people who are thriving, who you can thrive with. You don't need to be doing the same thing as another person. You could be doing the same, you know, or have the same goal as another person, you know, becoming a lawyer, becoming a doctor, whatever it is, becoming a professor, becoming an academic, whatever it is, you are going to do it in your own way. You have to have the resources though, to be able to go get it and go get it in a way that you're not wasting your time, right? That you can, that because you're, you're making this investment, your expectation, certainly my expectation is that when you're making an investment in a community, you are going to benefit not only in the way that you thrive, but in how quickly you thrive. So sure, you could say, well, I could do it myself. Yeah, you can, absolutely. But it will take longer and it will take a lot more stress and you'll feel probably a lot more anxiety. And that's not required. You don't need to be miserable. I always say misery is not mandatory. You can enjoy the process. You can enjoy any process. You just have to be around the right people, getting the right support. And it's not shameful to get support. It's not shameful to ask for help. And you'll thank yourself in 10 years when you've made the progress that you wanted to make in one year or two years rather than 10. And in 50 years, my hope is that whatever choices you're making, you will look back and say, that was a good choice. That was a good choice because I was able to move forward faster than I otherwise would have if I hadn't made this choice. So it's really important that we remember that the people we surround ourselves with and the technology that we use and the accounts that we follow and the mental diets that we feed ourselves all contribute to our thriving and don't work the opposite way. That they don't make us feel like we're being torn down, that that we don't feel like we don't have what it takes, like we don't feel like we deserve it. We do. We do. We also have to work for it. And so by putting yourself around people, by putting yourself around community, by putting yourself in a position to thrive, you will absolutely be able to build the life, a life that you can't even imagine. This is why I say beyond your wildest dreams, because every time you get to that next level of something you believe that you wanted, you want more. And you should. You should. Like, you should not feel guilty about that. You should want more. And I want you to want more. And every single person in our community feels that way. They say, okay, like, I have now achieved this. And I say, okay, what's next? What else do you want? Because it's not over. It's never over. And it's never, it's never too late. It's never, ever too late. As part of our community, we also have professionals. We have senior professionals. We have young professionals. We have professionals looking to transition between careers or career fields. We have young and senior professionals or seasoned professionals who are also looking just to transition areas within their current profession. And it is never too late because why wouldn't you want to be happy at every single point throughout your journey? Why wouldn't you want to enjoy it? And so this is why we work with with people at any age and any stage in their advancement because you should be making choices that you are happy with, that you are satisfied with at every step of the way. And so remember the metaphor of the turtle and remember that you may be unconsciously doing things that are not helping your growth, that are actually stunting you, that are actually stunting your growth and your ability to grow, and your ability to see new opportunity, your ability to ask different questions, bigger questions. And I want you to think about where you could be putting yourself. Remember, you have to give yourself opportunity. You have to seek out opportunity. And you have to make the choice to do that. What choices could you be making today that will propel you forward, that will skyrocket your growth? And you might feel a bit scared to answer that question. You might have an idea and then you might back away from it a bit and say, oh, but that's a big step. Now, here's the thing. We never change our lives or go through transformation by taking small steps. 
Yes, there are small steps in strategy along the way, but sometimes what feels like a big decision is what ends up propelling you forward the most. So just involving yourself with a community that you feel supported by, involving, deleting certain accounts from your social media, you'll feel lighter, right? These are things, these are things that can feel like really big undertakings, but small steps along the way will help you to achieve them and will help you to thrive and achieve that growth, that infinite growth that you're looking for. So the moral of this episode is don't stunt yourself, even subconsciously or unconsciously. Be really, really aware of your actions, of who and what you're surrounding yourself with, by what you are feeding your mind, and by how you are or are not investing in yourself. And what can you do to change that, to help yourself grow, to help yourself thrive, to help yourself expand into everything that you want? I would love to hear from you. Send me an email, adrian at Apply Yourself Global, or book a call with me to chat more. I would love to meet you. I would love to chat more about your growth, about maybe what's holding you back, or if you're having trouble even identifying what is holding you back. You feel like, you know, you're not meeting your potential and you just want to talk it through. Book a call in my calendar and let's chat. The link is in the show notes for my calendar and my email address, Adrian at apply yourself global is also in, in the show notes as well. So reach out. I would love to hear from you and thank you for spending this time here with me and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.